Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to my home worm farming channel. If you're looking for an active, supportive community of worm farmers, you are in the right place. Today we're going to look on the European night crawlers today. And then, basically, I'm going to extract, you can see the little screen here, I'm going to extract some of the castings that are already finished so that I can make a simple worm tea. No bubbling, no extra nutrients, just getting all the goodness out of the worm castings. So let's start first by getting some of those worm castings and get them going in the water. First things first, uh, we have to go to the finished side of the bin and we are going to grab some castings from that, but I am gonna sift them so I don't get all these chunks in my garden. All right, hang on, let me put you down and we'll start sifting out some castings. Okay, first things first, I'm just gonna grab a couple of small handfuls of the dry castings and I'm going to sh gently shake them to get rid of all the big chunks. And then these big chunks are gonna go back in the feeding zone. I'm looking to get a couple of pounds or right about one kilogram of the castings. Now when I do the bubbled worm tea with when I add all the nutrients and the sugar to multiply all of the microbes, I won't use as much castings on that because it's not necessary. All the goodness that is in the castings will multiply while it's being bubbled and with the nutrients. But right now, all I'm simply looking to do is to do sort of a soil drench and also a little bit of a fuller feeds for some of my struggling plants. So if you don't have a lot of time or you discover something in your garden needs a little bit of a boost, you don't have to spend two days making the complicated worm tea. You can just make this sort of a tea, a worm casting extract. So I'm just going to make sure that none of those chunks end up in my watering can. And that one of the ways that I do that is by doing some sifting. I could put this all in a bag, but that also works better if you're going to bubble and do that over a long period of time. Okay, that's about half as much as I want. And I am just skimming off the dry part of the bin here. And that is one of the good things about a wedge system. The part that I'm working out of here does not have very much in the way of worms. And additionally, um, all of the food is basically done. So it is uh, easy for me. And that is one of the things that I, I used to do when I was doing this a long time ago, is that basically I'd make things harder for myself because the worm bins that don't have a wedge system, you kind of have to either do a migration or you have to do something, uh, a light migration or a horizontal migration, which can take a great deal of time. And in the case of light migration, I only do that when it is absolutely necessary because it does stress out the worms. All right, I think we're almost done. I think I have about what I need, and there's no absolute recipe. We're not baking a cake here. A lot of these worm castings, you know, they have multiple different things that go into their makeup, so you're not going to get 100% the same kind of nutrients or even your beneficials in the way of bacteria and fungi. You're not going to get exactly the same thing every time you make a worm tea. So this is not miracle Grow. What we're doing here is not necessarily uh, fertilizing the plants. What we're doing is we're rebuilding the environment in our soils. So that's what you kind of have to remember is that we're not looking for a particular NPK. That's not what's important with the worm castings. The important part is the biology that can not only, you know, take the small amount of NPK that is in these, but also the microbes that are in the castings can go out into your raised bed soil or your garden soil and make all of the nutrients available to the plants that weren't available before they were there. All right, so we've got our castings. We're gonna put that in a bucket of water while we're working on the worms. First things first, let's look at the area that we just harvested and 
you can tell there are very little worms at this end by design. This end is kind of curing, if you will. Not very many worms, not much food, but I do keep turning it over like this so that I can get a homogeneous moisture on it. So when I do need to, you know, do a sifting, that the moisture is very low and it goes through my screen very easily. Now, if you liked that screen, I do have a link to that below in my Amazon links in the description of the video. So as we go farther towards the feedings, you're gonna start seeing higher moisture and also more worms because this is not as finished as the stuff we were just looking at. You'll see this is a ginger peel. You'll see a little bit of things that are recognizable, other than worms, that is. So going through here, you can tell that most of the worms seem to have moved to the feeding end. And I'll put a picture of what we fed last time on there. Okay, so when we do the wedge system, we're constantly moving it over so that we make room for the next feeding. So this part here is slowly getting moved every time that I do this over towards the finish section. The worms will slowly make their way out and go to the area that has more food. And then these castings will dry out and get ready for me to harvest. So I can probably take a couple, you know, probably five pounds or a couple kilos of castings out of a system like this every month during the warm season, mind you. During the cooler season, it does slow down a little bit, but that's okay. Um, that way I can collect up all the castings over the winter slowly so that when the spring push happens, then I've got quite the stash. All right, let me uh, flip the camera around. And we'll look at the business end. Okay, so these are all of the little, little bits that I sifted out. They'll go get wet again in the business end of the bin. So this part is probably just a couple of months old that I'm working on right now. And you're gonna see chunks of food, which I will continuously move over, and a lot more worms. So it was probably only a couple months ago that this portion was fed. And you can see, it's really kind of hard to see any particular kind of bedding bits in there. And also there's not very many recognizable bits of food with the exception of like the avocado shell. Now the European night crawlers in here are, oh, there's a pumpkin stem for maybe one or two years ago. Long-term food, I kind of keep them around as kind of a, a bacteria or fungal sink, keep moving them from bin to bin as I harvest. That way, you know, if I have to ever restart a great deal of the bin because of pest issues or something, I did do a restart one time when I had a rat in the basement. In order to save the worms from being eaten, I took them out of all of my systems and put them in buckets. Um, so if you had to do something like that, you'll want to keep the bacteria and kind of like a starter, almost like a sourdough bread or friendship bread. All right, so another pumpkin stem there. We're getting closer to the feeding zone, seeing more and more worms seeing more and more bits of food. Let's see. Okay, gets a little heavy at this point. It's getting also a little muddy. I was watching one of AV's videos the other day and he's starting to struggle with moisture levels. I think even Patrick was having a little problem. And that's, you know, the difference between Illinois, New Jersey, and Florida. And in this part of the year when the moisture is much higher than it is, everybody has to kind of relearn how to work their worm bin because uh, castings actually kind of suck the moisture out of the air. So when it's like 60% moisture in my basement, even if I don't add any water, these castings will still suck some moisture in. Okay, I'm gonna take all those parts and put them here and then let's look at the feeding zone. I don't know if we'll get a worm ball or not, but I know all of you, yeah, I got a worm ball. Good worms. Look at that. What good babies. 
Can't ask for anything more than that. Being cute for the camera. I mean, this is, after all, a worm channel. And if nobody gets to see worms, that's kind of boring, isn't it? This is a pineapple. They take literally, I would say, close to six months to go from a pineapple to finished castings. Oh, I think I've got something more squishy here. What have I got? Oh, that paper, that packing paper. It must have kind of went a little bit, got stuck all together and then I didn't have enough air in there for it to degrade. We've still got some mango pits in here, more of the pineapple, melon. If you don't put in a lot of bedding, I don't know what this is, potato maybe? It's everybody, everybody, all the worm farmers favorite game, name that rotting food. All right, I don't think I put any bedding in last time, and I think that was a mistake, because I do smell a little, it does feel, or does smell a little fermenty. So we're gonna move over all of this, and then I'm going to give them a healthy influx of bedding this time, because I don't think they had enough last time, which is why the particles of everything, unfortunately, got stuck together and got a little bit anaerobic. And it happens, you know, a lot of people really beat themselves up the worms are happy. They're all right here. They're all happy. You know, they know what they're doing. If something's not right for them, they'll move. Now, for those people who have very small bins, your worms can't move, and so they might try to escape. But in a big bin like this, which is why I've started gravitating towards really large bins, is that it buffers any mistakes you might make so that you don't hurt your worms. All right, let me get some bedding here. This is my prepared bedding that's been sitting around in my basement for probably about a month. I keep different bedding for different kinds of worms. Part of my goal is to show you how different worms behave in my particular zone and environment here in central Illinois. And I think it's important to know what kind of worms work and what ones don't. So that's the last feeding. I'm gonna put that on top of that new bedding. Now let's get them their new food. I'm feeding these guys about once every three weeks. It's gardening season. I'm afraid that growing my food kind of takes precedence over checking in on my worms every single day. I have a full-time job, so you know there's not always extra time. And that's fine. You know, the guy these worms do fabulous being fed about every three weeks, but it's a large bin. I give them big feedings and a lot of bedding. That's super important. You can't have a bus bin and feed them five pounds of food like this, and then expect that not to have problems. So here's the myth-busting part of my video. This is white onion. They will be happy with this. This is a pepper. They will be happy with that. This is a lime. Should break that open though, because they have a hard time getting through the, kind of desiccated. We might have to wait till next time. I can't get my thumb through that. But here's limes. They do fine. Avocado pits. They'll be four months, five months, but they're fine. We've got quite a few of the avocados in here, as Patrick would say. Just ordered my first batch of Florida avocados, the really big ones that are like this big. Uh, I am super stoked because there's nothing that compares to the um, fresh Florida avocados as opposed to the Haas you find in the grocery store. All right, let's get them another big bunch of bedding to cover this up. Okay. This is another three gallon bucket. So I'm looking at probably having added six gallons of the prepared bedding, which is cardboard and um, coconut coir, grit. And I think that's all that's in here. I actually have azomite in there this time for the nutrients. Uh, couldn't, I apparently forgot my grit. But so here's what we're gonna leave them with. This is about a third of the bin dedicated to bedding and food. This is gonna be much better than last time. We shouldn't experience any problems now. There are not going to be any anaerobic problems. It's nice and wet, nice and airy, and everything will be great. All right, now let's get to making that warm tea. Here we are outside, and I'm gonna make this quick because it is raining. Uh, whoever sent me the rain, thank you. Okay, so we have my little watering can. We have my castings and then we have some RL water. I'm gonna put these together and mix them up, and then 
I'll show you what I do with my simple worm tea. Okay, so for the simple worm tea, I mean, it still does have, you know, coffee ground amounts of the castings in here. And I'm just going to stir them up and then I'm going to use them for a drench for the soil. I've been making a lot of raised beds and doing a lot of gardening in uh, grow bags. And I don't think the, the biology is quite right. I've got a couple of peppers that are just not looking great for some reason. And I have a feeling it's because they lack the, you know, native nutrients that are in, in the soil where I've been growing in ground. So hopefully this will add what I need to make those pepper plants a little bit more happy. Okay, here we are at my little pepper plant that is struggling. You can tell that it's not a normal green like a normal pepper. It is a, I'll put the, the spelling up top because I'm sure I am not doing good at uh, pronouncing it, but it's Antip Acai Dolma and it is supposed to be a nice big pepper like a bell pepper only it is supposed to be a little bit spicy so i made sure i got the soil drenched and then gonna put it over the plant it's raining right now so all of these little crumbs will go away very quickly but i added about four solo cups to the soil and then a couple on top of the leaves. I know doing a fuller feed in the rain doesn't make sense, but hey, I'm trying to make a video here and I got what I got. But I have three of these exact same plants that are behaving the same way. So that is what my plan is. I'm just gonna keep doing things like this and hopefully these little guys will start extracting the nutrients I've provided already in these containers and they'll start looking better in a week. If you like this video, I have a full tutorial on how I make my brood tea that I will link right over here. And if you're interested in the nutrients that I add to the worm bins so that I don't have to fertilize as much, I will link that video down here. All right, guys, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you wanna know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day.